Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 2.7, inverse functions. The relationship between the graphs of f of x and f inverse of x. To close this series of videos, I want to explore the relationship between the graph of a function and the graph of its inverse. On the board, you'll notice that we have a function whose inverse we found two videos ago. f of x was equal to the cube root of x minus 7. Its inverse, f inverse of x, equals x to the third power plus 7. And both of these graphs are pretty easy to sketch because both of them are based on common graphs discussed in video 1 of the series. No, video 1 of the previous series. The graph of f of x is the cube root graph moved to the right 7. So if we move to the right 7 over here at 0, 7, we have the cube root graph that looks something like this. Not perfectly drawn to scale. But what about the graph of its inverse? This is the graph of the cubic function, which looked like that, up 7. So over here at 7, 0, we have, I'm going to do my best to draw this, we have I'm brain is trying to negotiate something and it's failing. We have that. So what's the relationship between the two graphs? Well, it looks like they have the same shape and you would be correct, but the relationship is stronger than that. For example, all of the ordered pairs correspond to another ordered pair. For example, the y-intercept here is 7, 0. But the x-intercept on this one is 0, 7. So saying that 0, 7, that's not, but saying that 7, 0 belongs to this function is the same as saying 0, 7 belongs to this one. Because remember, the core definition of an inverse relation is to reverse the ordered pair. And we could say the same thing for any ordered pair we could locate on either graph. For example, uh, without going into too much detail, I don't know why I keep putting the cap on, I keep taking it back off. The point 8 comma 1 is on the function of, of f of x, and I should label that this is f of x, this one is f inverse of x. How do I know 8 comma 1 is on there? Because 8 minus 7 is 1 and the cube root of 1 is 1. So if 8 comma 1 is on this graph, guess what point is on this graph? Again, not drawn to scale, 1 comma 8. 1 comma 8. 8 comma 1. 1 cubed plus 7 is 8. And again, connect. And we can do the same thing with any ordered pair that we find. So that's one relationship. Every point on one graph, its reverse image, its reversal is on the other graph. But what does that make the relationship between the two graphs as a whole, not just two, not just two points on the graphs? The answer? If you draw the perfect diagonal line y equals x, the line whose slope is 1 and whose y intercept is 0, then the graph of the function is the mirror image of the graph of the inverse. Every point above has a mirror image below and vice versa. It's almost like this line is serving as a mirror. If you tilt your, tilt your head, it's a little easier to see. So to summarize that, the graph of y equals f inverse of x is the reflection of the graph of y equals f of x across the diagonal line y equals x. So how can we use this to uh, answer a question besides discovering the relationship? Well, I can give you the graph of a function and ask you to draw the graph of its inverse. For example, the directions are sketch the graph of y equals f inverse of x. And I'm going to give you this picture. It's going to be a really simple picture. 
we're going to have the point back here, let's say negative five comma negative one. You know what, let's actually mark up the x and y axis. What a brilliant idea. I've got a yardstick around here somewhere. I was stabbing graphs with it as the horizontal line test previously. So, let's actually sketch this to scale. I think I'll put a mark every two inches. So, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, six, 28, 30, 32. And we'll use the same two inch scale vertically. So draw a, draw a y-axis and then mark off every two inches. We could use one inch scales, but then the marks will be pretty close to each other. And you guys are way over there, way over there. All right, so let's draw the graph of some random function that passes the horizontal line test. Let's go to negative five comma negative one and put a dot and label it negative five comma negative one. Then we're gonna go up and connect it to the point negative four, three. And then we're gonna send that through a y-intercept of five comma zero, and then the graph will just continue that way forever. So connect these. And we can make a piecewise function that does this. We would just have to find the equation of this line, define it for x's between negative five and negative four, then find the equation of this line, and define it for all x's greater than or equal to negative four. It's a nice challenge, but see if you can find the uh, equation, the function for this graph by building a piecewise function for each line segment. But if this is the graph of y equals f of x, first off, it does pass the horizontal line test, so it's invertible. To find, its, um, to find the graph of the inverse, we simply have to switch the ordered pairs and replot them. So instead of negative five, one, we would want negative one. I'm sorry, instead of negative five, negative one, we would want negative one, negative five. So right about here, that's negative one, negative five. Instead of negative four, three, we would want three, negative four. So right about here. And instead of five, zero, we would want zero, five. So right about here. And then just reconnect them in the same order. So it looks something like this. Start at this point, connect it to that one. And then connect these two and send it on its merry way. Looks like those two lines would eventually intersect, but that's irrelevant. So that's one way to get the graph is to read is to reverse the order of each given ordered pair and replot and then reconnect. Or if you just wanted to roughly sketch it without being so precise, you could set up that perfect diagonal line, which would be about here. And then the graph of the inverse, which I didn't label, y equals f inverse of x, is just the mirror image of the original graph across that diagonal line. This reflection also shows you why the horizontal line test has to work. Because if your graph fails the horizontal line test and is an invertible, that means its mirror image would fail the vertical line test and wouldn't be a function. So that's the relationship between the graph of a function and the graph of its inverse mirror image across the diagonal line, which is equivalent to saying reverse all the ordered pairs.